Um, hello, uh, good morning, good uh, afternoon, good evening, whenever you will watch this video, sir. Uh, this is John Sapan Live from MAG, and this will be my vlog about um, Lyme disease. Uh, my main objective is to explain the epidemiology of, the, of Lyme disease, but also maybe correct some uh, misconceptions or misunderstandings that some people might have about Lyme disease, which is some of it I've had, some misconceptions, misunderstandings, which is why I chose to do my vlog on um, on, on Lyme disease. So uh, because of a story I heard when I was younger, over 10 years ago, uh, when I was a, a friend of mine or a classmate of mine, they said somebody got Lyme disease from getting bit by a tick and they became paralyzed for life. Now in my head, I assume that paralyzed for life, that means that person can't move. You know, that's scary because when I heard that, I, I, I thought about it like, wait a minute, when I was younger, when I was in the Philippines, I played with dogs all the time. And these dogs, they would have, they would have ticks on them. So that means if I try to remove the ticks or try to play with them, which I'm sure I did when I was younger, I don't remember. But um, if, if, if it bit me, that means it would have given me Lyme disease and I would have gotten paralyzed for life. Obviously, that didn't happen. And actually, that's, that's what I thought um, when I heard this story. I thought that, wow, I could have gotten paralyzed. But that is that, that, that's actually not the case. You can get Lyme disease from ticks, but it's, uh, it's mainly uh, reserved for black-legged ticks. So other ticks... They can, they're the main vector of other illnesses or ticks in general. Obviously, like mosquitoes are the vector for malaria, dengue. So, but not all ticks carry Lyme disease. Only specific ones do. So, one in particular is the black-legged tick, otherwise known as the deer tick. Um, but the tick itself doesn't, while it does spread Lyme disease, it doesn't do it on its own. At first, it has to be infected. Now, for a black-legged tick to be infected, it needs to feed on certain animals. So, in particular, it needs to feed on a white-footed mouse. A white-footed mouse, it carries, um, it's a major carrier of a bacteria called uh, Borrelia burgdorferi. Borrelia burgdorferi, uh, and this is the main, uh, this bacterium is the main causative agent for, um, it's a main causative agent for Lyme disease. So the tick has to be infected f for it to spread Lyme disease. So it needs to feed on this white-footed mouse, which carries bor bor Borrelia uh, bor burgdorferi. So once this uh, tick is infected, any future animal or organism or future animal or person that, uh, that it feeds on uh, will be infected uh, by Lyme disease, or it can can be affected, may be affected by Lyme disease. For it to be, for you to be infected by Lyme disease, for I to be infected, the black-legged tick would need to feed on us. Uh, it would need to attach itself and feed on us for uh, more than 24 hours, so 36 to 48 hours. Now, obviously, chances are that's not going to happen. So there's, but still, it can happen. But that is the a requirement. It needs to feed on us for twenty for more than twenty four hours. Uh, so uh, that's why a lot of um, a lot of cases usually they're through getting bit by a, a smaller, uh, earlier, a smaller younger uh, black legged tick, so a nymph. So it is it's before the adult stage because when they become adults, they're more noticeable. So obviously, when they're noticeable, we can remove them and they won't be attached for long enough for, to give us Lyme disease. So Lyme disease is most common. It's most common in the uh, United States, most common in Europe. Uh, in the United States, in the US in particular, it's most common in the Northeast. So probably it's probably wooded areas, woody areas, forests, uh, areas surrounded by trees, grass. So this is where it takes like to be. They like to wait in the grass. They like to wait for mice, for dogs, for cats, for us. 
to walk on the grass and then they'll attach themselves to us to our clothing to the fur of animals and that's how it attaches itself to humans and animals and feeds on us and spreads Lyme disease so uh, there's three stages of Lyme disease and there's the first stage is the early localized stage uh, this is where you'll mainly feel fever-like symptoms so flu-like symptoms so fever chills and the second stage is um, the early disseminated stage this is where you'll start to feel pain aches even a uh, facial paralysis so drooping on both sides of the face the last stage, third stage, is the late disseminated, disseminated stage. And this is a stage where um, you can have vertigo, you can have arthritis, um, a mental confusion, disturbance in sleep. So yeah, those are the three stages. Uh, Lyme disease, it, it is found in Asia. Uh, it's, it's been found in China, in Korea, in Japan. In Nepal and in Indonesia it's not that from what I've read it's not really that popular in the Philippines but I'm assuming if it's, it's if it's been found in Indonesia then for sure it's been it, it exists in the Philippines because we have a lot of similarities as far as people and environment goes so I, I assume it's probably because the people that are infected in the Philippines by Lyme disease uh, they, they probably don't have the means to go to the hospital because uh, one, because they probably don't know about Lyme disease or two, they probably, if even if they are sick, the earlier stages of Lyme disease, they probably think they're sick, they have a fever. They probably don't know that it's Lyme disease. So it goes undiagnosed uh, because these areas that don't have any means to hospitals, uh, they probably, live in you know trees uh, areas surrounded by trees by grass so that's probably why it's not as well known here because it probably goes undiagnosed so what are some ways to prevent Lyme disease uh, wearing uh, long sleeve clothing long sleeve shirts pants this prevents the, the ticks from even though it can get on your clothing uh, at least it's on your clothing not on yourself so that's one way Another way is, uh, and you, when you remove your clothing, you know you're removing these ticks. But that's, and it doesn't, you know, it it. Uh, yeah, that that's one way of preventing it. But another way is definitely spraying insect repellent. Uh, third is, you know, after you you walk through grass or go through areas that might be populated by ticks, um, definitely take a shower, clean yourself, clean every part of your body. So it doesn't, the tick isn't able to attach itself for too long. So those are some ways that you can prevent Lyme disease. Um, thank you. That's the end of my vlog for Lyme disease. My name is Jan Sapan Lai from NAG. And yeah, that's my vlog. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Good afternoon. Good night.